Let me uh, tell the members, I think, that you deserve a great deal of credit for the uh, deliberation today. I think we've made a lot of progress. We still have quite a ways to go. And I want to uh, announce that we will now proceed to take one uh, amendment on the Republican side and one amendment on the Democratic side to Title I, and then we will uh, end for the evening. Tomorrow we will come back, at, and we have been here, I guess, 12 and a half hours, or at least 12 and a half hours since we started this morning. Tomorrow we'll come back at 10. When we come back at 10, uh, I will recognize a Democrat amendment and a Republican amendment on Title I. I would urge members to try to uh, consolidate as many amendments as possible so that we can move as quickly as possible. And then I will recognize members in Title II, and we'll have amendments to Title II for three or four hours, and uh, then we'll move on from there. So I just wanted to alert the members to uh, uh, what my expectations would be for tomorrow. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. Just want to ask a few questions what you just said. Certainly it's appropriate to try to consider amendments on other titles, but I want to make sure that members that have amendments to Title I won't be precluded at some point in the markup from coming back to that title, because we still have about 40 amendments to Title I. The members won't be precluded from offering amendments to Title I. Uh, as, I, as I indicated early, when we go by a title that doesn't close out amendments, it uh, puts them off for later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let's see. We now will recognize an amendment on the Republican side. And Ms. Blackburn, I believe you have an amendment at the desk. You're seeking recognition to offer an amendment. Uh, and is that amendment to Title I? Yes, Mr. Chairman, it is. And will the clerk inform us whether the amendment meets the time qualification? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. The uh, clerk will report the uh, uh, amendment. Amendment offered by Ms. Blackburn. In Section 1, Without objection, the, the amendment will be considered as read, and the chair recognizes the gentlelady from Tennessee Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Minutes. And this amendment has uh, been distributed and is on the member's desk. It deals with disclosure of cost in consumer bills, and Mr. Upton joins me in this amendment. And we've had a lot of discussion today about needing to get information for, to consumers so that they will know uh, what is in this legislation. And the need, we just talked about the need for having a consumer advocate and protecting consumers. Well, this is a way that we can take a proactive step in making certain that consumers have the information that they need because they need to know, we all agree, consumers ought to know when they're purchasing something what it costs them and what the price is for items on the, that they are going to purchase. And the legislation that we have been talking about today with cap and trade, great discussion about whether we're going to see it yield a savings or whether it's going to yield a cost. And we know that our consumers potentially can see a significant increase in what they are paying for services. So these cost increases that are passed along to consumers and businesses in their utility bills, in their manufactured products, at the gas pumps, that will be reflected on their bill so that they will know what this legislation is costing them. And the amendment would require the EPA administrator to put forth regulations that would require the disclosure of all those items on the bills. Now, the, the amendment is would require the administrator within six months of the date of enactment of this legislation to bring forth regulations that would require utilities, motor vehicle providers, manufacturers, food providers be required to show the cost of compliance with the Waxman-Markey bill in each utility bill at the fuel pump on all of the man manufactured products. Put it on the label, put it on the food label so that consumers will know what the true cost is of this legislation. I think that this is the way to take a proactive step and get that information that consumers are going to want to know about the cost of enactment of the legislation. And at this time, I will yield to Mr. Upton. 
Oh, he laughed. Sorry, I just want to join in support of this. I would note that um, we do a lot of this in Michigan already. As I said a few hours ago in Michigan, when we passed uh, the Renewable Portfolio Standard uh, mandate, our customers are going to know exactly what those costs are. And I think that that's important for consumers across the country to know what this bill will cost them. And I'd like to think that we might be able to save a little time and pass this by voice. It's a good amendment, and I join a good lady from Tennessee in support of it. Yield, I yield back to the general lady. I yield back. Will the general lady yield? Be happy to yield. I rise in strong support of this amendment. I think it's one of the most important amendments we've heard all day. Uh, during the evening, we've heard a number of complaints uh, that all of the prior amendments have suspended the effectiveness of the law, repealed the law if unemployment went up or electricity prices went up or gasoline prices went up. And there's been consistent objection, indeed eloquent objection, that that's not an appropriate way to legislate uh, and that we ought to offer some other remedy. It seems to me in an era when transparency is so important and when consumers deserve to know what they are paying for, that this is kind of the rock bottom minimum. We have pledged to the American people that we are going to be open and straightforward with, for, forward with them about costs. There are many analyses of those costs uh, from various competing sources. As I have mentioned earlier in my comments tonight, the uh, Heritage Foundation has put out information talking about how much prices will go up. I think the least we can do uh, to disclose to the consuming public the various costs added by this legislation. Americans need to be able to engage in an informed discussion and to know uh, how much the prices are going up on the various goods they're buying so that they can make a cost-benefit analysis of the evils they're avoiding in terms of increased greenhouse gas emissions, carbon dioxide, em dioxide emissions, uh, and to realize what they are paying to avoid those in order to protect the environment, uh, at least as alleged by the advocates of this legislation. It seems if we, to me that if we don't disclose those costs to them, they cannot make an informed decision. Uh, I join uh, uh, both the gentlelady from Tennessee and the gentleman from Michigan and support and commend this amendment uh, and thank the lady for yielding. General lady's time has expired. Who seeks recognition on the amendment? Mr. Markey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, I speak in opposition to this uh, amendment. Let me begin by saying that the EPA has already estimated the cost uh, that will occur from this bill. Uh, the, co the costs are quite small. Uh, the EPA estimates that the cost to a typical household will amount to 27 to 38 cents per day for the entire household. And that is without taking into account energy efficiency provisions uh, in the other parts of the bill. EPA has estimated that the cost of gasoline will be about two cents per gallon increase uh, for each year. Last year, gas prices went up $2. Uh, and where did that $2 go? Well, it went into the pockets of hostile regimes uh, all around uh, the world who used that money to fund uh, uh, armed efforts against us and against our allies. Uh, the truth is that this will be a huge imposition on businesses across the country. This will put an incredible administrative burden uh, on, uh, on companies, uh, on utilities, um, that will not, in fact, uh, outweigh whatever benefits uh, the minority hopes that the consumer will, uh, in fact, derive. So you already have an estimate from the EPA, if that's what you're interested in. Um, but if you're interested in imposing an incredible administrative burden on every single company, every single product, uh, in terms of its need then to be uh, subdivided into the actual cost, uh, then you'll wind up raising the costs of all of these goods uh, that you intend, uh, obviously, on informing consumers about. Uh, and perhaps the cost of that should be advertised to the consumers as well, because I fear that it would be greater uh, than any of the costs that would be imposed uh, by the effects of this bill. And by the way, uh, when more efficient automobiles are made, when homes are better insulated, when appliances consume 50 percent of, uh, of the energy which they consume today, all of those benefits as well will be derived by the consumers in our country. So I urge uh, a no vote on this amendment. Uh, I think it really is just meant uh, once again to uh, 
uh, to uh, go right to the heart of the opposition of the minority to the legislation, uh, but uh, the estimates have already been made. And if you want them, the EPA has them available. Uh, the I will, will the gentleman yeah. yield? Uh, I will be glad to yield. Um, I, if you believe that the cost will not go up or will not go up meaningfully or indeed will go down, then why would you oppose disclosure of that information to consumers? Um, when, when a small business in any of our districts are manufacturing widgets, how in the world are they going to be able to determine uh, what the cost of the legislation that we are now considering had on the production of that widget? The cost to that company in discharging the responsibility placed upon that uh, company's CEO uh, will obviously uh, be an additional business expense uh, that will exceed whatever information is derived from that effort. And so, uh, it's, it's ultimately a counterproductive uh, proposal which the gentleman is making because what you're really looking for is the macro um, uh, re result, I hope, and that's what EPA has already done. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have millions and millions of businesses being forced uh, to make this calculation and the cost will be astronomical. If, I yield back to If the gentleman would yield. Sure. Would the gentleman yield? I'll be glad to yield, yes. I, I thank the gentleman so much. Uh, the EPA estimates that you're referencing are not what we are addressing in this. What we say is that the administrator would put in place within six months of the date of enactment of this legislation rules that would require the utilities, the uh, motor vehicle providers, manufacturers, to make known what the cost of this legislation is. Now, there is already retail transactional software that can compute this. So it is not as if you're giving them some type mandate, which would be difficult to meet. If I'm there is software that can go in and compute this for them. So I, I think I that what it I, would if be. If I may, if the general lady would let I, me I will, my time. Yes. Your, your amendment actually says manufactured product label. So that would be the manufacturer of every product in the United States. Food label. That would be every farmer or every Re reclaiming every my time. producer of goods not in our your country. Time. <laughs> and so you would spread this across, the way it's written, millions of small business people in our country who would then have to put together a compliance uh, a program uh, that uh, would ultimately cost God knows what the number would, but it would, it would be in the tens of millions of dollars for the American business. Mr. Markey's time has expired. We'll now go to uh, the Republican side, Mr. Stearns. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Markey, uh, EPA made estimates. These are estimates, not actual. It's interesting to note that the majority put forth this bill without getting a CBO estimates. Now, he quotes the EPA. Now, there's a couple modeling flaws that were used by EPA in getting these estimates. The most egregious one is they assumed 150 percent growth in nuclear, 150 gigawatts in additional nuclear power. Now, I don't see anywhere in the bill where they could make that assumption. They also assume, these, another assumption, that India and China um, will basically reduce their emissions by 2015 and they're onwards. Now, I don't think that's a credible estimate. They also believe that customers will get rebates from these allowances. They also talk about the recession. They actually assume that the current recession will put a permanent damper on economic growth. So I guess my point is that EPA's estimates are flawed, and there's, in fact, seven of them that are flawed. And so when you look at them and you say, as Mr. Upton indicated, Michigan is already implementing this, so it's not a huge administrative effort. And frankly, frankly I think everybody in my state, when they get your utility bill, they like to see what the costs are just when they get their telephone bill. How do those different incremental costs go in a composite way to the total? Would the so how hard would it be 
to have the utility company tell you why the utility is going up if it is due to renewables. Would the gentleman yield? Yes. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Um, I think that if the gentleman suspects the methodology used by the EPA in determining what the macro cost will be, what confidence could the gentleman have in the EPA under this amendment? Well, put together well, the a methodology is, for every manufacturer, every company in the United States oh, the to make a determination. Is they, they would not be estimating. They would actually With, within decide. six months after this law passes. Well, they would have actual uh, data to use. Now, the mandatory reporting rules that you support already require manufacturers and others to collect this information for their company. Isn't that true, Mr. Markey? Excuse me, could you repeat that question, please? The mandatory reporting rules that you support already require manufacturers and others to collect this information for their company. Uh, that's that, our understanding. Is that so? So if, in effect, that's true, together with the need for our customers to have a realistic appraisal of what's happening, I think this is a very reasonable amendment. And I think everybody on the other side would say, look, we're in favor of food labeling. That has not been a big problem. We would like to see our utility costs broken out. We would like to see our phone costs broken out. Why not see what the cost of the renewable would be? Thank you. Surely you couldn't be against that, even those, even those consumer advocates. On would, the, would the gentleman yield? I would be glad to yield. Thank you. The, the, the rules that are included in this legislation only cover um, the class of emitters, and those are the largest emitters of greenhouse gases. What this amendment calls for is every manufacturer of every manufactured uh, product, regardless of size, every food labeling company, regardless of size, all across the country. So you're creating a broad-based program, which was something that we deliberately avoided in terms of targeting the largest emitters for coverage under this legislation. Well, I think the gentleman is sort of making a compromise here. He's saying he could support it, perhaps if we just covered certain entities or major emitters. Or major emitters. Um, another thought is, um, you know, when we talk about automobiles, they tell the content of automobiles. I mean, I think across our spectrum in our economy, we see well manufacturers are telling the consumer this information. And it appears in a, in a small way that you've already instituted in the bill this mandatory collection. So, I mean, perhaps if you object to it being, as the bill points out, on utility bills, fuel pumps, manufactured product label, food label, maybe there's just one or two items that you would agree to, and that would make it uh, acceptable to you. Is that possible? Uh, gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes himself for five minutes. This amendment doesn't pass a laugh test. Let's let just see what this amendment says. In six months after this law is enacted, we're going to have the administrative EPA promulgate regulations to require that the cost will be the cost of compliance with this act, borne directly or indirectly by utilities and all the others, will have to be disclosed. Well, some of those costs are not going to be incurred for many years, if not decades. We didn't put everything in place at once. We wanted, for example, to have a um, a period of time in which, uh, in which we have utilities operating, burning coal, and uh, then at some point, w many decades down the road, there will be carbon sequestration. Uh, I don't know how they could possibly, in, in six months, try to figure out the cost of compliance. Now, it's just cost of compliance directly or indirectly by utilities, motor, uh, motor vehicle fuel providers manufacturers of products, providers of food. Now, uh, and then you have this, all this is going to be disclosed. I can't imagine what kind of bureaucracy would have to be created to try to do this job. In fact, I can't imagine any bureaucracy that can do this job. You can hire lots of people to do a lot of analyses, but you're not going to get an answer that's going to be in any way uh, give any information. Then there's going to be a requirement that the price paid by consumers resulting directly from this act shall be disclosed on each utility bill, fuel pump, manufactured product label, or food label. 
now let's see a food label you go and you buy it processed food it's comes in a package it's frozen now the cost of freezing it the cost of transporting it the cost of the ingredients and how long they were that what the transportation the costs were for those ingredients to be taken from one place to another you can go on and on and on trying to figure out how this administrator at EPA is going to have to figure out the to have to deal with this mandate now um, what is the cost of uh, our growing reliance on foreign oil that's a huge cost consumers might want to have that information disclosed to them what is the cost of the failure of the Securities and Exchange Commission from regulating the markets under the Bush administration when that agency pretty much went to sleep to let big corporate traders do whatever they wanted to do. Well, we know some of the costs, the collapse of our economy. But somebody should try to give us some assessment of those costs and disclose it to the consumer. What is the cost of the, uh, of the uh, uh, outing of a CIA agent by the Bush administration? Oh, well, it meant a lot because people within the CIA had to worry what the consequences were going to be to them. What were the costs of torturing prisoners? Maybe the American people would like to know that. Uh, what is it going to mean for would our the gentleman troops? Gentlemen, yield? No, I'm not going to yield. What's it, what was the cost, the cost of FEMA? We have a couple of members here from uh, uh, from Louisiana. What was the cost to your constituents of FEMA not being able to do its job because the head of a FEMA the head of FEMA was some crony, and then after even after he left, FEMA was so uh, deprived of funds and leadership and ability to do its job. So you could ask for costs that are very relevant from a lot of different uh, points of view, and we could set up huge bureaucracies to try to figure out those costs. But to what purpose? This amendment would ask a new bureaucracy to figure out six months after the enactment of this law all these different costs to each of these different uh, different uh, utilities and motor vehicles and others I, I just think that uh, there's no purpose in this this amendment like the other so many of the other amendments we've heard today is just to try to drive home a, a theme people should be scared people should be scared of this law because uh, uh, this may result in the collapse of our economy, a huge unemployment, all these other things that nobody's been able to establish. Uh, if it's such a scary act, why is it being supported by the utilities, the EEI? Why is it being supported by the auto manufacturers? Why is it being supported uh, by uh, so many of the other business communities, especially those who were part of the U.S. cap? Uh, I, I just think that uh, what we're seeing is a lot of obfuscation by the um, Republicans about uh, the legislation and trying to drive uh, scare tactics. So my time General has expired. Chairman. Well, Chairman I'm, I'm going to recognize you on your own time because I've exceeded right. my time. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Barton. I ask, uh, I rise in support of the um, Blackburn Amendment and seek recognition. You Speak your, in favor. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cranky, cranky. Cranky. <laughs> <coughs> We've had a, a good debate today. Uh, points have been made on both sides. Uh, there is a theme to some of the Republican amendments, we'll admit it, and that theme is not to scare the American public. That theme is to drive home that there are going to be costs to this. There are. In the, in the testimony before. And benefits. Well, that's a debatable proposition, but at the appropriate time tomorrow, we can have that debate. Um, you know, I will grant that on your side, you think you, you perceive there to be benefits. And if you'll grant on our side that we perceive that they're going to be real cost. We didn't have any testimony that didn't say that this act, if implemented, although that we didn't have the actual cap-and-trade allowance system that is now in your bill uh, wasn't going to uh, uh, to have cost. Now, we've tried to put some uh, 
price cap protection on various aspects of those what we think will be real cost increases we don't know what those costs are going to be the blackburn amendment just simply says whatever it is the american people have a right to know it uh, this amendment doesn't say suspend the act it's just a transparency amendment it's all it is um, six months you've got a valid point six months is not a reasonable amount of time but you could take your remarks against Blackburn Amendment, strip out the word Blackburn, and put in the Waxman Amendment in the nature of a substitute, and we'd be making almost the same speech. So, you know, it's, it is scary to think about some of these cost increases that are going to come down the road. Uh, it, it's very scary. Um, again, we've asked the CBO to score it. Uh, hopefully they'll score the first five years and we'll have it available before this markup concludes uh, sometime this week. But I will, I will point out that the EPA analysis, if you talk about doesn't pass the laugh test, the EPA analysis doesn't even attempt to cost Title II and Title IV of your amendment. It assumes uh, a huge number of nuclear power plants being built in this country. It assumes compliance with Kyoto by the signatory countries at a time certain. It, it assumes a, an offset uh, compliance internationally that is almost guaranteed not to happen. And so if you make all those assumptions, you can talk about $10 a ton emission. But if, if you include some of the things, and you use reasonable assumptions uh, that the EPA didn't do, which the EPA even admits that some of their assumptions are questionable. You're not going to get $10 a ton. You're probably not going to get $20 or $30 or $40 a ton. You're going to get somewhere between $50 and $100 a ton. And at $50 to $100 a ton, the cost of this on an annual basis, even in the early years, is over $100 billion a year. So <laughs> excuse us. If we say, let's have a transparency amendment that exposes what these costs are, the American people have a right to know. Uh, one thing that we know on the Republican side is this is not a free lunch. You know, um, it is going to be costly. It may not be as costly as some of us fear it to be, but it is definitely going to be costly, and there should be some transparency. That's why this is an important amendment. And uh, if, if you want to change the compliance date so that we have a little more time to get the data, if you don't trust your own EPA and you want to let the EIA do the data collection and, 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 and review, those are amendments that, that we would certainly accept. At least I think the, the author of the amendment would accept. But the basic premise of transparency uh, and accountability to the people who vote for us and elect us to repre re represent them, that's not a laugh test, and we make no apologies for it. So I support the um, amendment. Would the gentleman yield? I've got only nine seconds, but I'll be happy. That's to all it'll take me. <laughs> you know, the chairman said it was laughable, and I read down here where it says an increase in the price paid. That means it's been paid. He says if it's not enclosed, or if it hadn't been incurred, uh, you couldn't report. Well, hell no, you couldn't report it. it. It hadn't occurred. So you at least belong in the giggle gallery, Mr. Chairman, if he's laughable. I think if you read these here, it shows that he paid it by consumers resulting directly from this act shall be disclosed. That means when it says price paid, that means it's been paid. Uh, it, and it means it's been incurred in all likelihood. So I don't really see anything laughable about this. I think this is a bill that would give some idea of what's happening and, and report to the people and let a little light into the situation. And I'll take it back. I don't really think you belong in the giggle gallery. Thank you. Are we ready for the vote on the amendment? Gentleman from Louisiana. Chairman, uh, thank you. Requesting time in support of the Blackburn Amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I liked uh, her description of it so so well. I want to yield time to Ms. Blackman. I'd like to hear her talk about it again. So I yield my time to Ms. Blackman. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Mr. Chairman, I think that you were beginning to hit on 
where so many people that we are talking to have concerns. And you said uh, that that it is hard to equate this this tax, but that's where they're going. People know this is going to be an energy tax. They know they're going to be paying more. You mentioned the frozen food that they would buy at the store. Absolutely, they know it's going to cost more to plant that crop, to harvest that crop, to go in and prepare that crop so that it becomes a food item, a processed food item that goes to the grocery store. You have that additional cost for trans transportation. You have additional cost to cool it when it is in the store. And then they're going to take it home and they will incur cost. So they know that every step of the way they're going to be spending more because of this cap and trade bill. They realize that. What we want them to know is to be able to figure it out, to be able to say, this is what the cost is. And I can assure you there is, there is methodology and there is software that will handle what your savings is and what your cost is on uh, retail transactions. There is uh, equipment that can be used to help. Manufacturers are labeling. They are working through the process of how many calories are in a bite, how much every single ounce of something costs. All of that labeling is transparent. When you go to the grocery store, if you went to the grocery store with me on Saturday over to Publix, you could go in and see how much per ounce everything that you want to buy is going to be. We're saying add something do, to this. Let them know what the additional cost that comes from the waxman Markey compliance is going to be. Let them see how much they are going to be paying for this. They have the right to know because they are the ones that are paying the bill. And we feel that that element of transparency is important for the consumers in order for them to appreciate the cost that they are incurring. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Georgia still has the time. Mr. Chairman, reclaiming my time and yielding back my time. Uh, yes, Mr. Gentlemen's. Those of us in Washington, we, when we introduce legislation, of course, we always feel like the benefits are going to be great. And, and the benefits may be great from this uh, legislation. But I think the gentlelady from uh, Tennessee has a good point, and that is we should focus more on the cost. Now, we don't know what the compliance cost of this legislation will be. But during the 13 hours we've been here today, I went through this bill, every page, and I found out that we are authorizing to be appropriated in this bill $2.8 trillion. In addition to that, we sell the allowances. It's going to be somewhere between $657 billion and $1.7 trillion. In addition to that, that does not include the $7,500 that will be available to anyone that has a mobile home manufactured before 1976 and it has a, and they are in the poverty level of 200 percent or below it does not include those costs does not include the cost of the civil penalties of up to one million dollars a day does not include the criminal penalties of up to a hundred million dollars on certain violations so we don't know the compliance cost but we d can know the actual cost of appropriate funds, selling the allowances, buying the mobile homes, and all of that. And I say that simply because the benefits may outweigh that. But I think it is important we pass this legislation, when we discuss this legislation, that we do focus on these costs. And the numbers that I mentioned didn't in include uh, the $90 million that was authorized by the uh, building centers that we're going to establish around the country. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Are we ready for the question? Mr. Sarbanes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'll just be two minutes. Uh, first off, with respect to the specific amendment proposed, 
I agree with you and uh, Chairman Markey that it would create an, a crushing administrative burden across the country. I also think it's unfair to compare the measurement that uh, Ms. Blackburn wants to do to what the EPA is trying to do because although I'm not an economist, I think if we had economists here, they would say that you can build models that will tell you what the aggregate impact of legislation of this kind might be across the economy, but you can't build models that will allow you to take it down to the level that's being proposed with any kind of um, certainty. So I think the exercise, even leaving aside the administrative burden it could create, the exercise is probably a futile one, and for that reason I would, I would urge that we, we reject the amendment. But on this larger theme that we've been hearing, I just wanted to make a comment, and that is um, there is a, there's a phrase I like, which is that, you know, it's very difficult to predict the future. We're, we're all struggling with that here. Um, but there's a phrase that the best way to predict the future is to create it. We're trying to create a new future here when it comes to energy. And it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to achieve this transition. But the scariest thing of all is to stay where we are. And I think the American people understand that implicitly. We cannot stay where we are. We keep getting caught in the switches because we haven't moved forward. And it's going to be hard. And Mr. Scalise talked about 55 pages of this bill to talk about the impact on American workers. Well, that's because we care what happens in a transition. We're not going to leave anybody behind. The allowances that you've chosen to distribute in ways that will try to ease the impact are because we don't want to leave people behind in, a, in what's going to be a difficult transition. But that doesn't mean we don't need to get to that new place. That's what this is all about. So yes, it's tough, but Americans are very resourceful and resilient people. They're up to the challenge. That's what we hear every day when we go around in our districts, and that's why we have to proceed forward on this bill. I yield back. Are we ready for the uh, vote on the amendment? Let's uh, proceed to a roll call vote. I suspect, suspect we'll get there. Mr. Waxman. No. Mr. Waxman, no. Mr. Dingle. <coughs> Mr. Dingle, no. Mr. Markey. Mr. Markey, no. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Pallone. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Rush. Ms. Eshoo. Ms. Eshoo, no. Mr. Stupak. No. Mr. Stupak, no. Mr. Engel. No. Mr. Engel, no. Mr. Green. No. Mr. Green, no. Ms. Deget. Ms. Deget, no. Mrs. Mrs. Caps. Mrs. Caps, no. Mr. Doyle. No. Mr. Doyle, no. Ms. Harmon. Ms. Harmon, no. Ms. Schakowsky, Ms. Schakowsky, no. Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Gonzalez, no. Mr. Inslee, Mr. Inslee, no. Ms. Baldwin, Ms. Baldwin votes no. Mr. Ross, Mr. Weiner, Mr. Weiner, no. Mr. Matheson. Mr. Matheson, no. Mr. Butterfield. No. Mr. Butterfield, no. Mr. Melison. No. Mr. Melison, no. Mr. Barrow. No. Mr. Barrow votes no. Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill, no. Ms. Matsui. Ms. Matsui, no. Mrs. Mrs. Christensen. No. Mrs. Christensen, no. Ms. Castor. Mr. Sarbanes. Mr. Sarbanes, no. Okay. Mr. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll come back to it. Mr. Murphy of Connecticut. Mr. Murphy, no. Mr. Space. No. Mr. Space, no. Mr. McNerney. No. Mr. McNerney, no. Ms. Sel Ms. Sutton. No. Ms. Sutton, no. Mr. Braley. No. Mr. Braley, no. Mr. Welch. Mr. Barton. Mr. Barton, aye. Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall votes aye. Mr. Upton. Mr. Upton, aye. Mr. Stearns. Mr. Stearns, aye. Mr. Deal. Mr. Deal, aye. Mr. Whitfield. Mr. Whitfield, aye. Mr. Shimkus. Mr. Shimkus, aye. Mr. Shattuck. Aye. Mr. Shattuck votes aye. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Boyer. Mr. Boyer votes aye. Mr. Radonovich. Mr. Pitts. Mr. Pitts votes aye. Ms. Bonomack. Ms. Bonomack votes no. Mr. Walden. Mr. Walden, aye. Mr. Terry. Mr. Terry, no. Mr. Terry, aye. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, aye. Mrs. Myrick. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, aye. Mr. Murphy of Pennsylvania. Mr. Burgess. Mr. Burgess votes aye. Ms. Blackburn. Ms. Blackburn, aye. Mr. Gingry. Mr. Gingry votes aye. Mr. Scalise. Mr. Scalise, aye. Ms. Castor. Votes. Ms. Castor. Anybody? Votes no. Ms. Castor votes no. Where'd she go? Anybody else? Mr. Mr. Pallone. Mr. Pallone votes no. Mr. Rush. Mr. Rush votes no. Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch, no. Mr. Ross, I never see you. Mr. Ross votes no. Have all members responded to the roll? Any member wish to change his or her vote? If not, the clerk will tally the vote. On that vote, Mr. Chairman, the, the yeas were 18 and the nays were 35. Eight. <laughs> uh, without objection, Mr. Murphy will be recorded on the vote. How do you wish to vote? Mr. Bur Murphy vo uh, votes aye. Okay. Mr. Murphy, Pennsylvania, aye. Mr. Chairman, the vote is 19 yeas and 35 nays. 19 ayes, 30. 35. 35 no's. no's. The amendment's not agreed to. 